Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter four is average rainfall. All right, so write a program that uses nested loops to, co to collect data and calculate the average rainfall over a period of years. The program should first ask for the number of years. Um, the outer loop will iterate once for each year. The inner loop will iterate 12 times, once for each month. Each iteration of the inner loop will ask the user for the inches of rainfall for that month. After all iterations, the program should display the number of months, the total inches of rainfall, and the average rainfall per month for the entire period. Okay, so this program is going to ask us, first of all, for how many years we want to calculate the, basically, how many years, okay, do we want to start calculating um, stats, f stats for um, for the rainfall collect uh, rainfall that particular month, right? So, I mean, for the rainfall, how many years do we want to calculate data for the rain um, for rainfall? Okay, pretty much. <laughs> so, for example, if the user enters, let's say two years, we are going to start asking for the first year in 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 the first month, how many uh, how inches of rainfall you know were, were there, and then we ask for the second. Sorry, for the first year in the second month, first year in the third third month, all the way to the first year in the twelfth month, and then we, now we begin the second year, first month. We are basically calculating every month within the two years. Every month within the two years. So, so we're starting from the first year, asking for the rainfall inches every month in the first year and every month in the second year. If the user types in five years, we are asking for the rainfall inches every month in, in all the five years. And then we are going to keep track of how many months we, we collected rainfall stats for. And then we are going to display the total inches of rainfall that fell, you know, that basically that fell throughout the whole year. And then the average rainfall by dividing the total inches of rainfall by the number of months. So let, let's start to write it and it will make sense. Right, so this program is going to use nested loops to collect data and, and calculate the average rainfall over a period of years, right? So the program is going to the program should first ask for the number of years. Okay, so that's what we are going to do first. We are going to ask the user for uh, the number of years. Okay, how many the number of years that we want to basically collect data. Okay, for right. So you're going to type the input or basically type the input function, and the input function is basically going to ask the user something. It's going to ask the user a question or tell the user to do something. So we are going to tell the user to please enter. The number of years like this okay so once we ask the user this we the user is going to type in something okay and the input function is going to return what the user has typed but it's going to return it as a string now the input function returns anything the user types by by uh, to us uh, anything anything the user types as a string by default so even if over here like we're asking the user to enter the number of years the user enters, let's say, 12. That 12 is not going to be returned as a number. It's going to be returned as a string. That's how the input function works. So but the thing is, we cannot use strings in calculations the way we want to use them here. So we have to find a way to convert w the string that the input function is returning. In this case, the number of years. We have to convert it to an integer because we are dealing with the number of years. Okay, It's, e it's either 1, 2, 3, or 4. We are dealing with the number of years. Okay, And we are asking the user decide that we we have to find a way to convert the string that the input function is returning by default to in this case an integer so we can use it in calculation so in that case i'm going to basically call <coughs> the int function and then surround everything that the user has typed to an integer okay the int function converts everything that you passed into it as an argument to an integer so we are calling the int function converting everything that the user has typed okay Basically, what the input function is returning, we are converting it to an integer. And once we have converted that to an inter integer, we need a place to store it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable, and I'm going to call it user number of years, okay? And user number of years is basically going to store what the user has, what the user has typed. The number of years the user has typed converted to an integer. So the program over here says the program should first ask for the number of years, okay, number of years, basically, number of years. The outer loop will iterate once for each year, okay? So based on the number of years the user entered, 
we are going to our, our, the outer we're going to create an outer loop okay of years right and then we are going to loop however many times the user the user provider the, or the user type for years right and then in in each iteration okay basically in each year we are going to ask for 12 months we're going to uh, we're going to create another inner loop and ask for 12 months in that year and after that 12 iterations are done we are going to go back to the outer loop and then I trade once, okay, for the second year, and then in that second, um, in that second time the outer loop has run, we are going to so basically that second time the out, the outer loop has run is represents the second year, and in that second year we want to. In the inner loop, I trade another twelve times to represent twelve months in that year, so we'll see how that's done. So first of all, I want to go ahead and I um, I trade, it for the number of years, right? So I'm going to create a for loop. And say for year I'm going to create I'm going to actually create a variable called current year I'm going to start from the current year okay I'm going to start from one so from for current year in range okay I'm starting from the current year in range I'm starting from one the year one all the way to use the number of years plus one now I'm adding one to use a number of years because if I don't add one to it and I just leave it as use a number of years, if the user is let's say enters twelve or let's say no, <coughs> sorry about that. All right, if the user enters let's say three for the number of years, right? Instead of starting from one and ending at instead of start instead of starting from year one and ending at year three. It's going to start from year one and end at year two because the upper limit over here the number that we, we type in this is the starting number and this is the ending number but it's not included it's not included meaning that we are starting from one to one less than the upper limit with upper limit or the out yeah the upper limit we specify here so in this case it's going to move from one year one to two the upper limit here is not included okay so if the user enters let's say five and we just type in five we are moving from year one all the way to year four five is not included five is the upper limit not included that's why we add one to it so if I add one to it and this becomes six assuming the user type in five years then now we're moving from one to five six is not included the upper limit is not included and that's why I'm adding one to use a number of years so we are moving from one to use the number of years plus one so that's current year is going to start from one all the way to the user number of years plus one okay so that's going to represent our year loop okay in that year loop if it runs once we want to go ahead and create another inner loop because over here it says the inner loop will iterate 12 times once for each month okay so if the outer loop which represents the year has run once in before it goes up and, and and iterates and changes current year to year two first of all when you're in year one ask how many to, uh, basically iterate 12 times for month for for months for all the months all the 12 months in the year and ask for and each time ask for the, the inches of rainfall that fell for that particular month before finish with all the 12 months before you go back up and check for the second year okay and each time the current year variable and the variable I'm going to type here is going to so the current year variable is going to represent the current year. The, the, I'm going to type in the current month variable, which is going to represent the current month. It's going to keep track of the current month and the, and the current year. Okay, these two variables. So the inner loop will iterate 12 times once for each month. Okay, each each iteration of the inner loop will ask for will ask the user for the inches of rainfall for that month. So let's let's fi finish first finish this. You want the inner loop to iterate 12 times. Okay, so starting from month one so for current month in range we are starting from one all the way to current month um no not, not, not current um no not current month we are starting from from current month in um we are starting from so i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry we are starting from <laughs> we are starting from one okay all the way to 13 13 is, is not included so now this means we are starting from month 1 all the way to 12 because 13 is the upper limit not included so we're starting from 1 all the way to 1 less than the upper limit which is 12 
So this current this loop. It, so anytime the outer loop runs once, out, outer loop represents the current year, which is year one. It starts from one all the way to basically the the, um, the number of years a user time plus one. So we are starting from the first month, and we are, and we are looping twelve times, one to twelve. Okay, it, it says one to thirteen, but it's one to one less than the thirteen. And each time the inner loop iterates, we want to go ahead over here. It says each iteration of the inner loop will ask the user for the inches of rainfall for that month. So let's go ahead and ask for the in, in, uh, inches of rainfall for that month by using the input function. We're asking how many inches of rainfall inches of rainfall um uh, let's say please type the in, please type the inches of rainfall for month one so please type the inches of rainfall for month now guess what for month i'm going to pass in another argument over here now we know the current month variable is keeping track of our month okay it's starting from one so the first time current month is going to hold month when this I, when this loops again and comes back current month is going to be two loops a bit loops i trace again and comes back current month is going to be th three all the way to 12 basically so current month we know is keeping track of our current month so i can go ahead and use it so please type the inches of rainfall or uh, four month current month like this okay so i'm passing in arguments into the into the uh, actually we can't i can't do that this is the input function i thought it was a print function um let's go ahead and print a statement Let, let's go let's go ahead and print before just using the input function to do that so let's see um i'm going to just type a print statement to just print this message so basically we can just go ahead and just use the plus sign to concatenate this so please type the inches of rainfall for month current month okay we are concatenating this variable to this now when you try to we can go ahead and format this if we want we can go ahead and use the format function to format this if we want all right we can do that we can format this to an integer okay because the reason why i'm doing this is because when you try to concatenate in this case current month holds an integer when you try to concatenate an integer to a string the interpreter python is going to complain and says that and say that it cannot con concat or convert an integer to a string implicitly so that means we have to go ahead and do it explicitly ourselves we have to do it ourselves so what you can do is you can either use the str str function but i realize the str function is not covered in ch uh, it's not covered from in, in chapter 4 and below but the format function is so i'm going to go ahead and use the format function so I'm going to format this particular variable as an integer. All right, so current month, I'm going to, the, the format function takes two arguments. What I want to pass in this case is current month, what I want to convert. It takes what you want to convert first as an argument, and second is how you want it con converted. Now I'm going to specify a, a format, a format um, I'm going to type a format specifier, basically format, uh, specify a format. And because current month is an integer, I'm just going to type D because I want it. I want it formatted as an integer. So D for an integer. Okay. I don't want it rounded or anything. You can't even round an integer. I mean, it's an integer. You can't round it. So I want it formatted as an integer. And one more thing. So basically, actually, format the format function returns when it's done formatting, it returns a string. So it wouldn't complain now concatenating a string to a string. Over here, if you realize, I've crossed this line over here. This line is like a guideline for me to try to keep 80 characters on a line okay I'm, tr I'm trying to it's like a python standard to keep 80 characters on a line and I, I want to do that that's why i have this line here as a guide so i have exceeded this line so i want to try to break this line on, onto another line and before you break this line, i'm going to break it somewhere here but before you break any line in python you have to type in the backslash and hit enter so now i've broken it so i'm not exceeding this line so that's good i am going to basically ask the user to please type in the inches of rainfall for month the current month Okay, so I'm still in the loop, the loop, and it's going to iterate 12 times. And once I have, <coughs> sorry, once I have the current month, guess what? The user is going to type in something, but by by default, remember the input function always returns a string. But we can't use a string. We need a number. 
the user is going to type in the inches of rainfall for the month. We need a number so we can do, you know, basically do math with it, do addition or, or perform addition uh, on, on addition with that number. So we need to convert that number in this case to a double. I'm going to, I'm go uh, sorry, a float. We need to convert it to a float because the user can type in 25.7 inches. So we need to convert what it, whatever the user has typed into a float. So I'm going to type the float function and surround everything that the user has typed in parentheses. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm calling the float function. I'm surrounding everything that the user has typed in parentheses. So this is good. This is good. This is good. All right. And then once I'm done converting it to a float, that's going to be the inches of rainfall for that month, right? So I'm going to create a variable that's going to hold that. I'm going to create a variable to hold in the inches of rainfall for that month. So I'm going to say inches. I'm going to say monthly in uh, rainfall inch inches. Monthly rainfall inches is going to be equal to what whatever the user has typed converted to a float. Now I realize I've exceeded this line again. So first of all, let me just break it. Well, let me bring this back. I'm going to break it somewhere around here. So I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, and I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Before I break it, I type in a backslash. I'm going to do that here and hit hit enter. It didn't really format. I'm going to push it here a little bit like that. Okay. If I want, I can actually bring it here. Uh, if I want, if I want to really keep it. Um, Organize. I can break it again here. Type in a backslash and hit enter. Now it's good. If I want, I can do that just to keep it organized. Or I can just just push it like the way it was, like this. Okay. So now I have the monthly rainfall inches. Now the program wants us to also. Obviously, after after we basically ask ask the user to type in the rainfall for each month. It says. Um, after all iterations, the program should display the number of months. Okay, the program wants us to display the number of months. So let's do that. We need an accumulator to keep track of the number of months. We need a variable that's going to keep track of all the months. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and declare that variable. Um, let's go first of all before the program starts. And for first, first of all, let me create a variable. The variable is going to be total number of months. And total number of months initially before the program, when the program starts, initially it's zero. Okay, we no, no semicolon. It's, it's equal to zero. <coughs> so anytime that we this this month or this month loop, okay, this inner loop I trade once, we have we are done with one month. Okay, we are done with one month. So let's go ahead and add one to total number of months. So total number of months is going to be equal to okay, j just so you understand. Anytime, because the, the outer loop represents one year. When it, I trade once, we are in the first year. Now, in the first year, this inner loop is going to loop twelve times. Each of each of the twelve times representing one month in that year. So, anytime this this inner loop I trade once, we have one here. So, when when I trade once before it goes up, we want to go ahead and add total number of months before it goes up and and run and I trade again. The so first time we add one to total number of months. Second time we add one to, to, to total number of months. We are keeping track of the number of months that um, this loop okay is, is keeping track or is asking for data. So anytime it I trade once we have one, we have one month. So let's add one to the total number of months. So total number of months is going to be equal to what's already stored in total number of months. Plus one, right? Or semicolon. Um, now we are adding one to what's what's already stored in total number of months. So initially it's zero. So when this iterates once, we are adding one to zero, and then we are adding the result. We are, we are assigning the result to total number of months. So total number of months will be one when this inner loop iterates once. So when it iterates twice, now already total number of months will be holding one. So we are adding we are adding one to what's already stored in total number of months, which is one, and then the whole thing becomes two. We are adding now we are assigning two now to total total number of months. So when this iterates twice, we'll have two, two here. So it's going to keep doing that. Now we you can go ahead and shorthand and write this same statement as total number of months plus equals um, yeah plus equals one, which means 
I am adding one to total number of month okay or you're saying or you can say total number of month is being increased by okay by one okay I am adding one to total number of months okay total number of months is being increased by one you, you can think of it that way if it helps so this is basically going to keep track of all our months for us and when all this loop okay all, when all the when this nested loop is done we'll have the total number of months in that variable and let's see the program after all iterations the program should display the number of months a total inches of rainfall total inches of rainfall okay so each month we are asking for the the monthly rainfall inches okay for that for that particular month this variable is going to keep track of that before we go up to the second month before it iterates again to the second month we want to also keep track of the total inches of rainfall for all the months basically so we need another variable to keep track of that once we we've, we've gotten the monthly rainfall inches we want to add it up to the total inch, inch of rain, in, inch, inches of rainfall we are creating a variable a total uh, inches of rainfall variable that's keeping track of the total inches of rainfall so once we find the monthly in, uh, rainfall inches you know okay for that mo particular month let's add it up to the total inches of rainfall anytime we find the monthly rainfall inches let's add it up to the total in inches of rainfall so i'm going to go ahead and declare a variable called total inches of rainfall here and I'm going to also initialize it to zero okay because when we start a program initially it's zero and anytime we find so before even the total number of months here anytime we get a monthly rainfall inches let's add it up to total total inches of rainfall so to, so just like this total inches of rainfall is going to be equal to what's already stored in total inches of rainfall Okay, plus monthly rainfall inches. Okay, so we are we are adding the monthly rain, rainfall inches to what's already stored in total, total inches of rainfall, and then assigning the result to total inches of rainfall. Okay, so initially it's zero. We are adding the monthly rain, uh, rainfall inches to, to total inches of rainfall, and then assigning the results here. And then each time we are adding the monthly rainfall inches. Okay. To what's already stored in total total inches of rainfall and storing the results back in back in total inches of rainfall. So we are accumulating basically the month the the rainfall inches each month. Each month we are we are adding what we got for this month to the total inches of rainfall. And we go for the second month we got we get the total uh, the monthly rainfall inches for February or the second month, and we are we are adding it up to the total to total inches of rainfall, right? And again, this same statement can be written as total inches of rainfall plus equals monthly rainfall inches. It's the same thing as the previous, um, the previous, the same thing as this. Okay, so I'm going to undo it. Okay, so now we, we this is going to keep track of our total inches of rainfall. And this is going to keep track of our total, total number of months. All right, so after all iterations, the program should display the num number of months we have that. The total inches of rainfall we have that and the average rainfall per month for the entire period now once we are done with the loop that's when we're going to go ahead and calculate the average ra rainfall we don't want to calculate the average rainfall in the loop this is once we are done with the loop completely once the loop is done once the nested loop is done iterating we are going to divide the total inches of rainfall because we need the full total inches of rainfall we don't want to do this in the loop we don't want to calculate the total inches of rainfall in the loop because if we do that, we wouldn't. We, we may not have the full total inches of rainfall. We want to wait till the loop is done completely to get the total inches of rainfall, and we want to wait till uh, until the loop is done to get the total number of months. If we do, if we calculate it in the, to in the in the loop, we may not get a total number of months because it's still iterating, it's still adding up the to total number of months. So we have to wait until the loop is done, until the nested loop is done, to get a total number of months, to get a total inches of rainfall, and to get the average rainfall, we are going to divide. The total inches of rainfall divided by the total number of months, right? So I'm going to create a variable outside the for loop, the nested loop. Call I'm going to call the variable average rainfall, and I'm going to set it equal to the total inches of rainfall because we're going to have it in the in, in the variable in, in the variable here. Total inches of rainfall 
divided by the total number of months. We're going to have that also stored in this variable when the loop is done. Total number of months here, like this. And then once we're done, uh, after all the iteration, the program should display. Okay, so we are going to display it. Display the number of months, the total inches of rainfall, and the average rainfall per month for the entire period. So now all we have to do is just display it. So I'm going to call the print function, no semicolon, and I'm going to pass in a couple of arguments. So the first argument I want to pass is a string, which is, let's see, number of, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to say number of, um, Oops. The first thing we want to display is I thought actually the program should display the number of months. So number of months is going to be equal to the total number of months, right? So I'm going to concatenate that with a total number of months. Now remember that when we try to now number of months is going to hold an integer. When you when we try to concatenate an integer to a string, Python is going to complain that it cannot con convert an integer to a string implicitly so we, that means we have to do it ourselves one way we tried to fix that was using the format functions let's go ahead and format this as an integer they're concatenated concatenating it with a formatted version of total number of months what we want to format is total number of months and how we want to format it is because it's an integer we want to format it as an integer by typing d okay and that's going to be the first argument passed into the print function the second argument we want to pass is the total inches of rainfall so total inches of rainfall I'll fix this soon Actually, let me do that now I'm going to break it somewhere around here I'm going to close the string concatenate it with the beginning of this string break it somewhere around here but before I break it I'm going to type in the backslash and hit enter so total inches of rainfall concatenated with the formatted version oh, hold on total inches of rainfall concatenated it's called let me call it it's concatenated with the formatted version of total inches of rainfall and this is how i want it formatted i want it formatted as okay the formatted function takes two arguments what you want to format and how you want it formatted i want to, the total inches of rainfall is a float right so first of all because it's a float i want it formatted uh, formatted as a float um, uh, it may it may be a decimal, right? So we will we'll format it to, um, to by uh, by adding the position. Well, let me do it now, and then later on we can change it. So I'm first formatting it as a float, right? And then I can specify the, the position. I want it formatted, let's say two decimal places. I'm going to put a point two in front of it. Now point two is basically the the position. I'm basically saying that I want this number formatted to two decimal places. As a float, point two means I want it formatted to two decimal places. If I wanted it formatted to three decimal places, I'd say point three. Now I want it formatted to two decimal places as a float, so point two f for float. We can do, we can leave it like this, and then see how it looks like. Because it's a float, right? And then the third argument I want to pass into the print function. Now I know I'm going to exceed the line, so I'm going to break it even before I type anything. So before I, before you break a line, you type in backslash and then enter. And then the third argument, I've already put my comma here. So the third argument is going to be, after all iteration, the program should display the number of months, the total needs of rainfall, and the average rainfall per month for the entire period. So I'm going to say average rainfall, average rainfall, I'm just going to say average rainfall. And then I'm going to concatenate, it, concatenate that with a formatted version. Now the format function takes two arguments again. What you want to format, in this case, I want to format the average rainfall. And how you want it formatted is the second argument. So I want it formatted in this case. Average rainfall also can be a, it can be a float. It can it can return a float based on a division. So I'm going to type in a float. I want it formatted as a float, also to two decimal places. And now I'm done. Now I've passed in these three arguments into the print function. So this is the first argument. This whole thing is the first argument, and I have a comma. The second this sec the second argument is this whole literal. And I have another comma, and the third argument is uh, actually sorry, sorry, sorry. This is uh, yeah, I was almost right. All right, so this is the first argument with a comma. 
okay and this is the second argument all the way to here with a comma okay and the third argument is from here it's basically the last one all the way here now I'm passing these three arguments into the print function by default the arguments are going to be separated by space when they are printed I don't want them to, to be separated by space by default okay they are separated by space you can basically change the separator by passing another argument in here and saying SEP for which stands for separator is going to be equal to now you are changing it you are changing it from a space to a new line character so the backslash n together the backslash n together is a new line character when the interpreter sees a backslash n it's going to basically create a new line it's going to take the case from where it's at to the next line and anything that comes in this case the backslash n is a separator so anytime one of these arguments is printed it's going to take the case to the next line and anything that comes after that first argument is printed on the next line so you are changing the default space which is the, the default separator which is a space you're changing it now to a new line character so now it's now these arguments are going to be printed separated by a new line so it's, this is going to be printed the case is going to be moved to the next line the second argument is going to be printed the case is going to be um, displayed on the next line I mean the case is going to be moved to the next line and the next last argument is going to be printed on that next line on the third line so I think this looks good let's run it and see how, how it looks let me just space this out so it doesn't confuse anyone um yeah okay so this is the loop this is the average one for outside a loop and this is the print statement out of outside a loop so let's run this and see what happens i'm going to save it where i normally save the python programs in the next step oops what did i do oh this is a screen flow actually that's one of the programs i did um oops did I close it? Oh, did it cr oh, it crashed. <laughs> wow. For some reason, it crashed. Uh, it should load. Actually, these are these are the questions. Uh, I already reinforced this one. It crashed. I don't know. For some reason, it crashed. Let's see what happens. Um, I think it should load load back the question. It should load back the question. It shouldn't lose everything. <laughs> yeah, so I'm waiting for it. Sometimes it does that. I don't know. This is like the third time I've seen it do that. So let's wait and see if it loads. It should load up the question, I mean, the code back. We shouldn't have to do it again. All we have to do is just wait now, see what happens. I don't know why it crashed. Maybe I mean, sometimes it does that. Maybe it's my PC. All right, so it's loading. <coughs> just one moment. Please bear with me here. Okay, so Wing has found changes that were not saved during your last session. Please select the files you wish to cover. Restore selected files. Let's see if it rest okay, so it it restored it. So we haven't lost anything. This project is already open in another instance. Uh okay. Okay, all right, we have it here. So I think we're good. All we have to do is just try to save it. I hope it doesn't crash again. Save selected files. Did it crash again? Let's see. I clicked it. Still loading. I clicked it. Okay. All right. So now, now let me let me go ahead and save this as after I saved it on the desktop. Python programming challenges chapter four. I'm going to go ahead and create a folder for this one. I'm going to call it. Um. Hmm. Am I here? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm here. I can actually, yeah. So I'm going to call it average rainfall. So that's the folder, right? Yeah. And then I'll create, save this as average rainfall.py. Average rainfall.py. And then now let's wait for it to run. Okay, so please enter the number of years I'm going to enter one year for now and then I'm going to hit enter now it says please type the inches of rainfall for month one so it knows exactly what month we are on okay I was supposed to put the colon some but let me just put a colon just so it looks good please type the inches of rainfall for month okay let me put a colon here I don't know 
after one after month one over here this is this is where it's displaying month one i want to go ahead let's see <coughs> i want to go ahead and concatenate it with this is the float function concatenate it with a colon so so plus a string which is a colon and a space so that means I'm going to go ahead and break it again I'll basically just pull this to the left a little bit yeah like that so now we're fine okay so I'm concatenating with a colon and a space just so it looks good so please enter the number of years I'm going to enter one hit enter so now we have a colon and a space all right please type the inches of rainfall for month one I'm going to type in two for all of them okay so I'm expecting for 12 months I'm expecting two inches of rainfall for all of them so I'm expecting 24 inches so two now for month two, two, month three, two, 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 two. Now month twelve, I'm going to enter two. And now, 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 guess what? We for number of months, it's, we got it got it right. Number of months is twelve. We got it got it right. Total inches of rainfall is twenty-four. It, it got it right again because two plus you know basically two times twelve is twenty-four. And average rainfall is div it's dividing twenty-four divided by twelve. Okay, and that's that's correct. So it looks like this this is working. Um, we can go ahead now. Let's tr now let's try this. Now let's try for two years. So for two years, it's going to ask us all the months in year one, all the months in year two. So I'm going to hit enter. Please tie with the inches of rainfall for months. Um, let's see. Okay, so we could have added month one year and the year in the current year two. Now we have the current year variable also keeping track of the current year we could have added it in this in the in the statement over here so please type the number the inches of rainfall for month now this is the month right for month here to so month one and then we can say comma year okay now we can concatenate that with the formatted version of the the value of current year because current year is keeping track of the current year it's going to tell us the current here okay basically of, of where the loop is is at at the current moment all right so formatted for so here the format the formatted version of current year okay like this and, and I want it formatted as because it's an integer I want it formatted as an as, a, as an integer like this all right so now I need to break it some more I'm going to break it somewhere here before I break it I'm going to type it backslash and hit enter all right so now this looks this looks okay i mean it looks okay if it's confusing i can put a line here like this but since it's part of the loop i'll just leave it and so now it's going to print please enter where is it please type the inches of rainfall for month let's say month i don't know it basically it's going to print the current month and then the current year year current year and now i want to go ahead and um go ahead and concatenate that with a colon in a space so let's run this again and now I'm going to enter two years and it says please type the inches of rainfall for month one year one okay so when I type two I'm still dealing with the first year when I type in I'm going to type in two for all 24 months I'm expecting 24 months because there are 12 months in a year so two and now it says please type the inches of rainfall for months two year one so I'm going to type in two for all the months in year one so now I mean, so for month twelve, year one, I'm going to type in two. Now when I hit enter, now it's it's going to switch to year two, year month one, and now it says please type the inches of rainfall for month one, year two. See, it's given it, it knows exact year, month three, month four, year two. So I'm going to type in two for all of them, and I know I have twenty four months because I'm dealing with two years, and I have two, there are twenty four months in two years. And I'm expecting twin. I'm um, expecting how many? Tw um, I'm expecting uh, what? 48, 48 inches of rainfall for all the all the year. That's the total total to all the two years. That's the total inches of rainfall, and I'm expecting 24 months, right? So average rainfall is going to be 48 divided by 24. All right. So when I hit enter now, I'm see 24 months. It got it correct. Total inches of rainfall, I got it got it correct, and then it divided the forty eight divided by twenty four, and it got it and it got it correct because two times twenty four gives you forty eight. So this program is working. One more thing, you can put a space up, or you can create a new line after all the questions I ask before printing the output. So.
before printing, you can go basically put a new line character here, backslash n. Remember the new line character we, we had in the program somewhere here, it's the separator. So before it prints a number of months, before it prints this, okay, the kether will be here, right? Before it prints the, this number of months, it's going to basically take the kether to the next line, which is here, and then start printing the number of months. So this is what the new line character does. It takes the kether to the next line, and anything that comes after it is displayed on that next line. So when I run this, we can do that. And I just type in one year, and I type in two for everything. Now there's a new line before everything is displayed. Or you can go ahead and use a print function. Here's a print function with nothing passed into it. If I type in something here, and I run this program, and I type in one year, and I just type in random stuff for the months, it prints whatever I tell it to print here. It prints whatever I tell it to print. But by default, the print function ends Okay, once once you've it's printed whatever you've told it to print, it's going to take the kesa from from where it's at to the next line. By default, the print function ends with a new line character, or it ends with a new line. It takes the kesa from where it's at to the next line. So after printing whatever you've told it to print, it's going to take the kesa to the next line. So anything that comes after this print function is displayed on the next line. Okay, so you, to, in order to create a new line, you can call the print function without typing anything, without printing anything. So you are calling the print function. This time you're not printing this, you're printing nothing. So it's still going to print nothing, but still take the case out to the next line because by default, the print function takes the case out to the next line. So it's going to print nothing, but, but because by default, the print function takes the case out to the next line, it's going to take the case out to the next line over here. And anything that comes after that print function over here displays on that next line. So this is also going to create a new line character and that anything that comes after this print function is going to display it on the next line. So when I run this and I try um, one year, two inches of rainfall for each month, it's, we still have the new line created here, and we still have our, our output. All right, so this program is working. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, bye-bye. Oops, sorry, I meant to type in something else. <laughs> Let me just, good start. All right, take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time with the next program. Bye-bye.